Yo, Pat Earl here with your Preject Prescription for September 23rd, 2009. Man, I'm excited about sharing this with you today. We're getting right back to where we left off yesterday, talking about reversing consumption. Because as we've been sharing, uh, our Preject wounds teach us to live consumptive lives. We're uh, broken uh, by Prejection. Our cisterns, uh, the well, the inner well that's designed to house, hold uh, the Spirit of God, which gives us our sense of fullness in this life, so that uh, we uh, have all our needs met in ourselves. Uh, the thing that empowers us, enables us to live that way, is broken through uh, parental rejection. And when that cistern is broken, uh, the fullness that we are born with or created with escapes, it sleeps out. And so we go through life living empty, feeling empty, and constantly looking to fill ourselves. And God never designed us to be concerned about filling ourselves up. He designed us to live full all the time. Uh, so so when, when we are turned inward to try to fill what's empty now, uh, we miss out on all the good things God has for us in this life. And so uh, uh, we got to reverse that consumptive lifestyle. We've got to uh, start living outwardly instead of inwardly. That is, instead of trying to consume, suck things into our lives to make us feel better, to make us feel satisfied and fulfilled, we've got to actually get that cistern healed and get filled up and overflow the way we were designed to from the beginning and then begin to live outwardly where we're living to uh, impact and bless other people. Well, um, the uh, way that we do that is to become generous, to walk in the way of generosity. And when we're generous, we're generating for others. We've got to generate from something. Uh, you've, you've got to have a power source in order to generate for others. Uh, when, when power goes out in your neighborhood, you, you've, uh, if you're going to be able to generate power uh, to uh, run your household until the electricity comes back on, you're going to need a source of that power uh, to, to generate that. And um, God, God has a generator inside of us. It's our spirit when it's filled up and we can generate for others. So uh, this way of generosity is uh, what happens when we get uh, healed, filled up, and overflow. We start walking this way. So uh, we saw yesterday that one of the blessings of walking uh, uh, in generosity is uh, that we prosper because God designed us to prosper. We all have an innate ability to prosper that uh, because of projection actually uh, is destroyed, it's impaired, um, and, and, and needs to be fixed, needs to be repaired. So uh, this uh, way of generosity is actually a reversal of that. It's a patch for that, helps to repair what's broken. Uh, so we left off yesterday. Yesterday, uh, looking at Proverbs 11:25 about prosperity, but let's go over now to Proverbs 22 and 9, and I'm going to put it up here in the studio so that you can see Proverbs 22 and 9. We do make technology our friend, and look at what it says. Now, remember, I shared that uh, the word "generous" does not appear in the King James version; it appears in the NIV, and it's trustworthy, so uh, you can believe that uh, it is the accurate translation for the Hebrew word. In the King James, it says, He that has a bountiful eye shall be blessed. And a bountiful eye means that every time, everything I look at, the way I see life, my mindset, my world view is bounty. That means that I, I see overflow. I see extra. I see uh, um uh, more than enough in every situation and every opportunity. I'm looking for the more than enough, the bounty. So uh, when I have a bountiful eye, he that has a bountiful eye shall be blessed. 
The word there means to be endowed with the dynamism to increase. That means increase operates on the inside of me. For he gives of his bread to the poor. That's how it's produced. If I give my bread to the poor, that is, if I am a giver to those who don't have enough, the word poor there means somebody who's in lack, who's what? Empty. Uh, and if I practice giving to those who are empty, help to, helping to fill others up, um, I'm going to be blessed. Well, uh, look in the NIV. It says, a generous man will himself be blessed for he shares his food with the poor. That's right. Generosity is really a, 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 a way of looking at life. When, when I am generous, I look to generate for others all the time, and that's my world view. I see opportunities for generating for others all the time. I do that out of a sense of fullness. I'm not looking to generate for myself, but for others. And because I generate for others, I am blessed. I'm endowed with a dynamism to increase increase and multiplication just revs up and flows out of me and of course things come into my life so that I can flow into others and so this wonderful cycle begins to happen where I get so that I can give because I've got a bountiful eye. I'm generous. I'm a generator. Say that over yourself. I am a generator. That's how I was designed to live. I am a generator. Amen. All right. Uh, let's go to the next one. Uh, let's go over to Psalm 112. Uh, let's see if we can get this back up there. Psalm 112 and verse 5. Okay. Uh, so these are benefits to uh, generosity. If I adopt the way of generosity, press into the way of generosity, I'm, I'm going to see good things happen in my life, and it will reverse that consumptive lifestyle. It will help to turn my projection around. I will no longer have to live a victim of parental rejection, but I can actually own my day and live the way God designed me to live. Psalm 112 and verse 5, a good man shows favor, leans toward, bends toward, uh, and lends. He, shall, uh, he will guide his affairs with discretion. Well, in the NIV it says, uh, Good will come to him who is generous and lends freely, who conducts his affairs with justice. Uh, when I live that way of generosity we're talking about, um, good things come to me. And that's one of the tragic things about projection is that it teaches us uh, many projects, we, we are taught to expect the worst in life, to expect bad things to happen to us. And we even have a mantra that many of us uh, uh, repeat over and over again. Oh, you know, if I didn't have bad luck, I wouldn't have any luck at all. Oh, you know, if something bad is going to happen, it's going to happen to me. Oh, bad things always happen when I'm getting ready to, you know, turn the corner. Uh, and, and we have this this, this concept, this belief that bad things will come to us. That's a, that's a result of brokenness. That's a result of not understanding who we were designed to be and living from a sense of, uh, of emptiness and constantly looking to fill up what's seeping away, what's seeping away. But when we live generous lives, our expectation changes. Uh, and good things start to happen to us all the time. So we start expecting goodness to come. Look at it. Look at it. It says, it says uh, good will come to him who is generous and lends freely. Now, uh, if you study the tense in that, uh, in that phrase there, good will come to him who is generous and lends freely, it doesn't suggest that it will happen once in your life. It suggests that it's a continual thing happens over and over again. Man, my time is gone. Where did it go? I'm going to see you tomorrow. Thank you, Father, for this revelation. Help us to begin to walk it out in our lives now. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, do me two favors. Send us to somebody you know who needs it, and then log on to prejects.com where you can find this and other prescriptions like it. And I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you.